This episode of the Game Over Greggy Show is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price, because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off your mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash gameovergreggy and entering the promo code GAMEOVERGREGGY. Casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses. They sell them really cheap. You should like it. Plus, Casper combines two technologies, springy latex foam and supportive memory foam. Are those technologies? I'll leave it up to you to discuss with whoever you're in the car with right now. To create an award-winning sleep surface with just the right amount of sink and the right amount of bounce. And those are my favorite kind of technologies, ladies and gentlemen. Sink and bounce. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you do. Bust out your phone, go to your browser, and go to casper.com slash gameovergreggy and enter the promo code gameovergreggy to get $50 off any mattress purchase. Andrew, what's your topic? Um, well, I went back and forth. We thought about maybe talking about marriage and weddings since I just got married, but I think it's still a little too fresh. Mm. You don't have, yeah, you, you don't you, have to come back. Exactly. So I thought it was an interesting uh, thing that happened recently. So we all know Kim K, Kim, Kim Kardashian, K. was in Paris and she got oh, oui, robbed. Oui. Yes. She was at this supposed um, like um, B and B for millionaires that apparently Kanye like owns or has a stake in or whatever and it was like this private place and she had been posting on social media and then these mass gunmen came and robbed her of millions of dollars of jewelry and it kind of led to a broader discussion of online should Kanye security have left the concert oh no I, well should Kanye have left the concert that's I think of course he should have yeah. like uh, d- that's a conversation I think for another time I, I need the I need the 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 elevator pitch on what happened you gave it to me there but yeah. I've heard pieces yeah that like they took out the security and ran in and got her or yes. they so they and then Kanye found out and he, like in the middle of a song he was like boom and yeah, like, in the, yeah, middle, in the middle of heartless at a concert he was like no I got really? a family emergency and he just left. like they showed the video like literally in the middle of the song Left. In Somebody the came of out and concert. told him, or they, oh, I guess he's got earpieces, probably. Right? Yeah. Um, They're like, Kanye, we got a, we got a three forty nine. He's like, God damn it, not today. <laughs> yeah. We were one day from retirement. So she was like, uh, um, supposedly she was like bound and gagged, and they robbed her at gunpoint. And I mean, for that to happen to anybody would be a really frightening mm-hmm. thing. I just assumed that Kim always had tons of security around yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently these uh, gunmen overpowered the security at the establishment where she was staying and the police said that they found her because she was posting on social media where she was. Um, so Wait, the bad guys found her on, the because bad guys of social media? Okay. Yeah. So I, I thought the it would be an interesting guys. topic to talk about <laughs> social world media. We <laughs> like what's safe to post and what's not because you know we're part of that generation or on the cusp of that generation that wants to be visible all mm, the time. Mm. I'm always on Snapchat. I'm always on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever your you know preferred social media platform is. And it's um whenever I go places, I usually like to check in as I'm leaving the place. Mm, mm. Because it, it's kind of, you know, in the back of your mind, you're always like, well, I don't know who's watching my stuff. I don't know who's in the neighborhood. I don't have any of those nearby functionalities turned on. John on his phone always has gets alerts when people on Facebook are nearby. I'm like, I always think that's kind of creepy and weird. It's like, they're like, oh, Why your friend they invite over here me? is like, you know, nearby. Yeah, and I don't have any of that proximity stuff turned on. Um, and so I thought it would be an interesting idea to talk about like what do you guys think as people who you know are in the public eye and who do post a lot on social media and have you know this really mm-hmm. large fan base you know like what do you guys think about what's acceptable to post on social media in re- terms of personal security and what's not like do you guys draw the line somewhere do you have a set of standards or do you just kind of like wing it every time mm-hmm. I mean I think posting anything is just like it's a bad idea so it's just like the moment you start doing that stuff, like you are opening yourself up to something, you know, like that's not uh, it's not good, but that's just life. That's how things are going to be. I remember a long time ago, my mom telling me all these stories of people around Christmas. Everyone gets robbed because people go on these group trips and like people are looking at people's houses. Right, and that was the plot out. of Home Alone. Uh, well, <laughs> there you go. True. No, but th- I mean, but like my mom's uh, growing up the entire block. Besides my mom's house got robbed because she was the only like family that stayed home, but like everyone got their shit jacked. Seems, seems like your mom saw Home Alone and just did you talk about putting micro machines down and stopping yeah, robbers that uh, way? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, like everyone got fucking robbed, and it's just like I've heard so many stories of, of that. And like uh, Kevin's uh, fiance, like his, she when she was in college, yeah. The, all the dorms and oh, stuff, yeah. those would constantly get jacked because people would just be like, oh, we know that the kids are in class. Yeah. Like you can easily kind of figure out someone's schedule if you're watching them. So it's like. Add social media to that, and it's just making things even easier for yeah, people of course, to, of to know where you are 
and where you aren't at specific times if you wanted to to do some shit. The Kim K situation, that's a little extreme uh, because, I mean, I feel like regardless of her doing social media stuff, they, are, they were trying to find her. So right. when you're trying to find someone, it's a lot easier like uh, to, to cause some shit. But I think for us, like, yeah, I, I never like posting where I am at specific times. Um, but that's just because I don't like talking to people. <laughs> You know, I don't well, want I mean, my friends yeah, to know where I'm, where I'm at unless I want my friend, friends, friends to know where, okay. where I am. Yeah, even my friends. Fuck those guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm-hmm. No, because I mean, we've done it a million, when we go to like shows or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And it is, all right, cool. In between GameStop Expo, we have this much time to run and eat and stuff. Yeah, I'm not tweeting where I am. Not because I don't want to talk to people, but because for the time to keep, the schedule to keep, you can't go do it. Mm-hmm. But then like uh, I started using Swarm. On the check-in app or whatever, like, oh, cool, and get these coins or whatever. But that is, like, so I'm super locked down, right? If I'm only talking to people I know in real life and who are also using Swarm or whatever, I'm not putting that out there like I'd put out my PSN because that's different, too. Mm. But that's the interesting thing. It is. Uh, it definitely gets in my head, you know what I mean? Like, we're lucky enough that for us, there's so many safeguards, right? In terms, Not that you're ever 100% safe, but, you know, like, we have an office, and so, like, we revealed where that is. Like, you know where our office is or whatever, and it's not that hard to find. But there's a great security system, and Kevin is, for some reason, always And Kevin here. will knock you out. And anything... <laughs> Kevin fucking lives here. I have no idea when he sees his fiance, but he's always here. Kevin's but always here. Anything... I, it's one of those things it's been where I'll stop in to get something, and I'll unlock the door, whatever. Kevin will text me. He's like, what do you need? I'm like, go away. Like, I can... I'm allowed to come into the office and not report in or whatever. And then it's the same thing, you know, we thought about when we were working out of the house, right? Like, that... You know, we don't want anybody coming to our house randomly. That's weird. And then it is that thing where for a while, I know we talk about it, where if we are like, yeah, we're both going to E3 or whatever this week. We're like, well, we kind of just publicized that we're not going to be home. But everyone that, knows that. I, mean, I know. But it's but it's also the thing of like for us, why I'm OK with it or not OK with it. But it's like it's not taking into account girlfriends who'd be there. It's not taking into account our landlord who is. He is a, I'll say an 85 year old man, (laughs) an 85 year old Batman, just always sitting there looking down and seeing what's happening. Anything out of the ordinary. You got a watchdog. Yeah. Portillo, of course, Mm -hmm. because I just stab the bag of food and leave it there. (laughs) See you in a week, bud. (laughs) I, uh, I feel like I, this reminds me of when we were in Louisville and, uh, I specifically was like, I don't want anyone to know where we are with these things. Cause you know, people come and it was your birthday. Yeah. yeah, And I I appreciate that. But I was, and I remember, I remember we went to silver dollar, which is an amazing fucking bourbon bar. Um, and you, you would said something or posted a picture of ever and someone came and, uh, and tried to like meet us and hang out. And he was a nice guy. It's nothing against but he was him already there. Wasn't it? I no, he, he came from down the street. It was at another mm-hmm. bar or something like that or whatever. And I appreciate it. It's a nice thing, but it's like, I try to do that. Cause I really do kind of covet my privacy. Like that, that's the, like when I, t- I tweet often, I use Facebook basically only for like missives that I need to, you know, political fucking diatribes I need to go on. And then and jet stuff and yeah, jet stuff. And then Instagram, I post like I I mean to post more on Instagram, but I just don't post a terrible amount on there. But uh, on Twitter, I try not to talk about like if I'm going to Long Island, I'm a Long Island's a big place. Millions of us there. I'm like, I'm on Long Island. That's all you need to know, you know, or whatever, or like if that or I'm, you know, I, I try to just draw the line where it's like, you know, I don't want to get too personal. But if I'm going to a good restaurant, maybe I'll talk about that or whatever. I, I feel like our, our fans are good natured and, and grounded enough where like I don't think anything bad is going to happen. And I've never had like a terrible experience with a fan ever. And I've met thousands of people at this point in my life um, from both IGN and from kind of funny. But I do try to be mindful of that. I also try to respect the privacy of those around me as well. Um, but as I get older, I try to I become more reclusive and more private. And so I try to try to do that as much as I can to. to yeah. You know, like people every once in a while, I run our social media. So some people run every once in a while, reach out on Facebook or whatever, even email us and are like, can we, you know, we're in San Francisco. Can we come meet you? And I'm like, no, like the, like the, this is our home city. Like we try to remain, maintain our privacy here. Um, I think that's because we're so open with everyone. And sure, so like, I, best friends, that people right? feel like they, but um, you know, I do try to draw that line where I'm like, like you wouldn't, not that I'm comparing myself to an actor or something like that, but you wouldn't necessarily go to, you know, um, an actor you like, you know, Mark Ruffalo, or whatever. <laughs> I do like Mark. I'd be Ruffalo. like, "Hey, man, I'm in whatever city you're in. Can I come? You know, like so." No, I'm like, I hear you. So but I try to do go to their houses though, and just kind of camp out and wait. And take yeah, pictures. and that's creepy. And so I don't want to. I don't want to. So, like, I also try to respect that about other other people. Um, you know, uh, people huddling around a, like a concert. Sometimes you see someone or whatever, and I try. I'm like, you know, I try to like give them the space where everyone be like, they just want to play their music. They don't care about you know really interacting right now and sure. they're tired or whatever. So. Anyway, it's kind of a diatribe, but no, I get it because that's yeah, the I, thing. Do, I, I do try to maintain my private, my private sphere, and my public sphere is really my Twitter. Like that's where I'm like, you know, so many kids have said it too, where it's um, they'll ask like, what I've, it's happened recently. I forget when it was. Um, one of the last ones, maybe it was GameStop, maybe it was something else, where we finished. It must have been GameStop. We finished, and we were. I was like, and somebody's like, oh, so what are you guys gonna do? And I'm like, oh, we're gonna go out to dinner. And the kids like, hey, can I come? 
And he didn't do it in an annoying way. Hey, can I come? And I was like, oh, no, sorry. It's a private thing. He's like, hey, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And I was like, I understand that. And I do understand the relationship we've set up. And I also understand the the history I've set up. Where it was, I remember when kids first started caring about us at IGN, when it would be, Damon and I would be like, somebody's in town. I'm like, all right, cool. You want to go to Kate O'Brien's? And we'd go out and get drunk with one fan. And it was just like, that's how it was. And then you're, but it's to your point as, we've gotten older and I feel like the yoke of responsibility has been put on us, right? Where it is that thing of like, this is our time to hang out with you in the, the way we hang out with the best friends, right? And so that when it does get to, all right, it's like how I've, I've had to stop doing fan podcasts, right? Because there's so many requests and I'd love to do them all, but it, then it does becomes that, all right, cool. Now, instead of having four hours of free time when I get home today to see Portillo, talk to Jen, do whatever, play a game, I'm going to have three and a half or three or whatever. And it doesn't sound like much, but when you start adding it up, it does become, we'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's the kind of, um, um, interesting aspect of this because, you know, as people who are involved in it, you're like, I need my private time, but there's a school of thought people who are like, well, you're in the public eye. So you kind of give up some of your inherent privacy by agreeing to be a public persona. And I think that's really where, you know, the, all of this really online, ugly online, like, um, conversation came around the whole Kim K situation. I don't know if you guys saw any of the stuff that was happening. Mm-hmm. It was it was really kind of gross. Like the way people were like attacking her what, were they for like getting she attacked. It or something? Yeah, I mean that's the nice way of putting it. It, it got really really bad. It's really victim blamey of just like why did you post about this? Why you should yeah. know better than this 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 and it's like all right. Like, yeah, I mean, she's going to have a target on her back. I mean, maybe she should be smarter. I don't know. I, I, I she has a security detail, I'm sure. She's very rich. Um I, I don't know. To me to me it's just like, you know, she probably isn't. I mean, her experience is so magnified compared to ours, like many oh, you know, yeah. exponentially. Oh, yeah. We're not saying we're in the by, same team. by orders of magnitude, but um, she's probably also experienced in her life, you know, like the the the, the kind of the craziness of, of a fan base, but also probably has a lot of very nice personal interactions with people. Like people are probably very respectful. Like to to me, like I don't buy the whole like you give up your privacy thing. Like I don't buy that at all because it's real. If you see Tom, you know Tom Cruise walking down the street, it's actually on you to say something to him. He's just a dude walking down the street. So like I understand why people are like excited about that, but I don't. Necessarily, I think the onus is actually on the people to be like, that's a dude at a restaurant eating a meal, and he wants you to just be left alone. So fucking leave him alone. Like it's it's just it's that easy, right? So. Um, with Kim Kardashian, she probably was like, "Well, I can be honest. I'm in Paris, or whatever." And, and these guys probably triangulated. The thing that always, the thing that always gets me with these kinds of things. You were talking about people casing people's dorm rooms, for instance, and see. It's like you could just go get a fucking job. Like you're putting so much energy. Maybe not with Kim Kardashian because they're stealing millions of dollars worth of shit. But someone's casing a person's you know, dorm room for a month to steal their laptop. Go get a fucking job. Go stop being a low life. Like you're putting all this energy into these things. You know, to, to try to wrong someone when you can really just thug Spider Man make any up. S- it just that kind of shit doesn't make any sense. Like, put your energies. Obviously, you're somewhat intelligent. If you I, do I, that. I mean, to be fair, I don't think it's it's too hard. I don't think you need to to trace someone for a month to understand their their, their schedule. schedule. They're like uh, dressed. College, they're like they're, they're like in in Bushman outfits, <laughs> like ghillie suits. Trying to figure it out, out. it all down. All right, just, she goes to class every time. I mean, because it's pretty simple. Like, <laughs> specifically with the dorm stuff, you can kind of do the math. Be like, all right, well, all these buildings are the exact same building replicated over and over. We know that each one has a maximum of two people in it. Like, if they're really doing shit that's, like, not right, there's three people, someone's sleeping on the couch. So you're like, all right, cool, there's that many people. If you see that many people leave, you're good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Sounds like, sounds like you know a lot about casing dorm rooms, Tim. Yeah, I mean, I'm not Empty your stupid. pockets. <laughs> 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 I'm doing just a bunch of just freaking, like, all these college laptops. textbooks. <laughs> the textbooks are where it's at. Yeah. You get those things, you can resell those for a million dollars. Really? They call they go for a million dollars. Million dollars no, no, resale. No, ridiculous. No, I know. I'm, I understand. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah. I'm happy yeah. I never need to buy another textbook in my life. Yeah. Never Word. did really. I had one of those nightmares the other day where I uh it turned out I was I was back in college and I had I, I hadn't gone to these two classes like the entire semester and I had the finals coming up and I needed to nail them. I was like, I don't know. I, I, those, I have those dreams constantly. It's like nagging at me always. Yeah. High school too. No, oh, high school? Fuck college that. sometimes, high school sometimes. Yeah. Like, why am I back here? Like, that's my question. It's like, well, I didn't pass a math. I'm like, I graduated college like 10 years ago. Like, what yeah. the hell is going on here? Well, that's yeah. the best when you wake up and you're like, oh, all right, I don't have to do that again. <laughs> I know. I can't <laughs> imagine, man. I can't imagine ever going to school again. Ever. Ever, ever. 